Today we're going to tear apart this Toyota 2ZR FXE engine, commonly found in the 3rd gen Prius and many of the Lexus CT200s. We want to find out why it was consuming oil and what we can do to prevent that. First we're going to talk about the EGR system. You have the EGR cooler, the EGR, the EGR pipe, the intake manifold, the throttle. Back down in there is the PCV valve, we'll talk about that later. And this is the, this side right here, is the exhaust manifold, which channels it up. First, what happens is after the engine is warmed up, the EGR acts as a sort of a throttle, which there's a little valve inside, which opens and closes, allowing some of the exhaust gases to come up through the pipe, and get cooled by the EGR cooler, channeled through the EGR into the EGR pipe and into the intake manifold. From there, it goes into this pipe, into the intake, into this hole right here, which is that one, that one, and gets channeled into these four smaller holes in the intake ports. The problem is the EGR cooler, EGR, EGR pipe, and the intake ports, the small uh, holes in the intake manifold, get plugged up with carbon. While the engine is cold, or while you are accelerating uh, more than 25% of the throttle, the engine uses this throttle body for the air intake um, into the intake manifold. However, after the engine's warmed up and you're like slowly accelerating less than 20, 25% of the throttle, it actually uses the EGR system to provide air for the air fuel mixture for the engine which means if this system is plugged up and this throttle is an opening, there's not enough air to go into the engine for a proper combustion, causing a misfire. But it also causes more problems. Since, the, since there's no air to go into the intake manifold, it creates a huge or a large vacuum. That vacuum puts undue pressure on the intake manifold because the intake manifold is looking for air to supply for the engine. So the vacuum gets channeled actually through this pipe, which is connected to the, that back there. We'll take it off later as you can see it, to the PCV valve. So too much vacuum sucks oil out of the PCV valve, channels it into the intake manifold and into the engine, causing you to burn oil. So we're going to tear this apart and show you exactly what happened.
Okay, now I got the pistons out. I kind of wiped them off a bit. Um, let's take a look at this one first. See how the compression rings, the upper rings, they have a, uh, a gap. Let's see here if I can... Uh... Okay, yeah. So it has that gap right here. If I spin it around, this one right here also has a gap. Let's see if I can get that focused. The lower ring. The lower ring is the one that's important. The oil ring. That one has a gap right about here. Now, when you take these out, you're gonna notice that the gap, let's see if I can, there we go. That this gap is going to be narrower on some. Let's take this one, for example, nice and wide. Please excuse the, uh, the banging and the shop next to me. This one, this one right here is problematic. Okay, then I'm getting a small screwdriver. So we're not paying attention to the upper rings at all. We're paying attention to the lower ring. This is the oil ring. That gap, see if I can get a better. That gap, sorry, right here is because the ring is actually compressed in. So if I take this out, I'm literally just going to peel it back a little, walk it around, and then I'm gonna let it rest back in, in the groove. What I did, I just not opened up that gap. Now, what caused that gap in the first place, let me take this ring out completely. This lower ring is the oil ring, okay? So what happened is there's a spring on the inside of it. And when you let the engine get low on oil, because of the vacuum um, from the EGR cooler or whatnot, it actually allows small deposits to get um, of carbon to dunk up this this ring. There's a, it's actually just a spiral uh, spring around a wire, and what that happens, uh, what happens next is it kind of compresses it because this ring is always being compressed like by the cylinder wall like this. The springiness outward is what when the ring comes down um, it takes the oil away so allowing the oil to get too low allows this ring the oil ring to compress too much meaning that as the piston comes down when it should be wiping away the oil from the cylinder walls it's not so it comes down the oil still stays and it all gets com compressed and combusted and burns the oil out. We're going to change these rings today. I'm going to clean out one piston and clean out these grooves. Um, I'm just going to do one on video, uh, but you're gonna do the same process for the other three.
side now. Next, we're going to install these. These are the bearings for the crank, each one. Now that those are in, can't forget these guys facing out, the ridges facing out. There's only one spot it'll go. This one and that one. A little bit of oil. Now carefully I'm going to drop in the crankshaft. A little more oil. Now the newer bearings on the caps, these are numbered, number one. One, two, three, four, five. They will be numbered. Numbers going this way. You can read the numbers uh, from standing on this end. I'm going to drop those down. But they're all in, you're going to torque them down to spec. All these 12.14 millimeter sockets. Torque them all down to spec. Some more oil. After torque down, it should spin freely. No play, back and forth, any. Still nice and smooth. Don't forget these guys. Go down into here. Slide that. Go in. Facing up into the bottom of the piston or facing down if the end is upside down. Don't forget to bolt them in place. The Allens. These guys right here. Pop on the rod bearings. Piston rings from the DNJ, domestic and Japanese. There's a part number for standard. You're gonna make sure none of the gaps, these gaps right here, line up with either the pin or the side. So that one lines up halfway. Next one up, right there and this one right there. As always, lots of oil. Arrow, always facing towards the timing. Get the piston ring compressor tool. Make sure the piston that you're putting down, the crankshaft is down. If it doesn't go easy, then something's wrong. Push it down so it lines up with the crankshaft. Right here. Now you'll see when you put it together that there's a little letter or a number that needs to line up. Then you know you have the right one. Okay, once it's torqued down, give it a good little spin. It should spin freely, a little tighter now because it has the new rings, but not bad at all. It's good. Don't forget, more oil. Silicone, ultra black, oil resistant. Okay, silicone's on. Both it together. This piece, letters facing out, the lip facing out that direction. This side's flat, it's going in first. 
This is what the crank position sensor reads at flat spot. Next. This one. Side with the dot facing out. There. Two yellow links equally spaced, so it doesn't matter which way you go. One dot there, the other dot here. This piece is symmetrical. We're going to line up the dot. Like that, with the yellow link. Line up this one with the yellow link. This side has a flat side. Lines up with the flat side on the oil, on the oil pump. There. 14 millimeter nut. Some of you might recognize this. It looks like a Honda timing cover bolt. It's actually the oil chain tensioner. Right here. This spring goes up against the wall. This bolt. Screws into there. You want to impact this. If I were to turn this, it will cause this to swing. If I use an impact gun, this might break. Putting a large socket behind it. There. Next, timing chain gear. This dot facing out. O-ring. The rest is covered with the cylinder head and the timing video, but this one will no longer consume oil.